Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. We will get started in roughly two minutes at 1.01 p.m. Eastern time to allow everyone into the Zoom platform. Please be patient with us as we prepare for our broadcast. Thank you. Once again, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. We will get started in one minute at 101 p.m. Eastern time to allow all of the audience into the Zoom platform. Please be patient with us as we wait to get started. All right, I have 101 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you for joining us today for our LPF webinar titled, Putting the Brakes on ORC with Percheck, sponsored by Gatekeeper Systems. My name is Matt Schreiner and I'm the Senior Director of Operations for the Loss Prevention Foundation, and I will be your host today. Before we get started, we would like to thank Gatekeeper Systems for being a valued LPF partner and for sponsoring today's session. With 20 years of service and insight into the retail market, Gatekeeper Systems has engineered a suite of integrated products to address loss prevention, operations management, and analytics with a goal of being invisible and unobtrusive to store customers while clearly providing a quick return on investment. So let's talk about a few logistics items. First and foremost, the session is being recorded. Everyone is muted and audio is available through the Zoom platform and the dial-in number provided during your registration. We do ask that you ask all your questions through the Q&A box within the Zoom platform, and we will hold those questions until the end of the presentation to ensure we're able to get through the material that has been prepared for you. Joining me today, we have Craig Greenberg, SVP and of Sales and Marketing with Gatekeeper Systems. Good afternoon, Craig. Good afternoon, Matt. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Next up, we have Paul Jones, Director of Sales East U.S. with Gatekeeper Systems. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon, Matt. And last but not least, we have Mike Lamb, Retired AP Executive. Good afternoon, Paul. Or Mike, excuse me. Thank you, Sam. I mean, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, now let's meet our moderator. So joining me today, we have Terry Sullivan, President of the Loss Prevention Foundation, who's going to walk us through this material. So Terry, over to you. Thanks, Matt, and welcome all. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, today to join us, and specifically Gatekeeper, just a fantastic um, LPF partner. Um, I'm just really honored to be here today with Paul and Mike, uh, not only industry leaders, but also Loss Prevention Foundation uh, board members. So thank you all once again uh, for joining us. For those of you that aren't very familiar with Gatekeeper, Gatekeeper has a number of uh, shopping cart based um, solutions such as cart retention, cart push out, a cart management system because we all know how expensive shopping carts can be, um, and then a cart based data analytics system. But we're here today specifically to talk to you about uh, push out prevention and the per check solution that Gatekeeper um, offers. When you take a look at just our problem today, when, when we look at organized retail crime, uh, car push-out just continues to plague us as an industry. And we're gonna go ahead and start by showing you some real videos of the, the problem. So go ahead, Matt, why don't you roll the video?
This one's great. I love this. She, uh, her car stops. Hey, I'm going to go get my purse out of the car. Uh, uh, wait, hang on. Here's my purse. Okay, well, hey, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll see you later. Yeah, nice meeting you. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, Greg, you know, when you look at these videos, it's, it's amazing how matter-of-fact uh, people are, right? The car stopped. They try to push it again. They don't know why it stopped, but I'm out of here, right? You know, they know they right. didn't for the product, um, and they're leaving. And this really, you know, captures a couple of different aspects of shoppers, right? So it's it's the casual shoplifter, right? The, the customer that's probably been stealing from your store for months and yep. months, if not years and years, and you never do about it, to organize right. retail crime. When they're coming in, loading up carts full of hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of merchandise um, and pushing it out the store, hoping not to be discovered, but most importantly, to leave the store with that merchandise. But because of per check, stopping um, the cart um, at the door, that just simply can't happen. And let's face it, when we look at organized retail crime today, it just continues to escalate. The number of incidents continue to escalate. The amount of violent crime in our stores continues uh, to escalate. And what per check does, it really helps separate our employees um, from the bad actors trying to get out of the store uh, with the product. So Mike, I know you've had a lot of experience with, uh, with per check. Uh, what's, what's your overall two cents of the solution? Well, you know, well, first of all, uh, good afternoon or morning to everyone. And it's, it's a pleasure to be on to always continue to talk about the industry that uh, I, so, I so love. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had the experiences at, at Kroger of, of utilizing uh, gatekeeper systems, uh, specifically Percheck, and, you know, I, 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 the emotion is always there when I look at these videos that, that we just saw. You know, you, you've got individuals coming in, loading carts of product, pushing it out the door, uh, but with this technology, so much of that is being deterred. And, you know, I, I can tell you, we, you know, we, we, we talk about ORC incessantly, and we should. You know, as you know, Terry Watts, on 39, 40 states have increased their felony thresholds. We have a fundamentally broken judicial system as it relates to theft, which just fuels this problem and makes it even worse. Uh, so not only do you have that issue, but you have the issue of safety and safeness. Uh, you know, if, if you think about confrontations at the door, that's where the opportunity, opportunity for violence oftentimes rears its ugly head. And, you know, the nice thing about this product is you know, it is, it's, it's humanless, right? Uh, it's, it, it's there, it does what it does, which we'll talk about here through this presentation. But I'll tell you, not only does it help with your battle on shrinkage, and you know, for those of us that are, and I was a practitioner, you're doing everything you can to thwart and deter this type of, uh, this type of activity. And to see the power of this tool in video, because the picture is worth a thousand words, I think is very compelling. Um, a number of things come to mind as, as I think about the experiences, you know, that I had with this technology. You know, one, we know ORC is a contributor to shrinkage and loss and profitability to any organization. Two, and perhaps maybe it's number one, not number two, is this issue of safety and safeness. And I think it helps uh, protect against that. And then, you know, guarding is a very difficult industry to manage, right? I mean, in my years between Home Depot, Walmart and Kroger, it's where do you put guards? What hours do you put guards in? Well, the system doesn't take a day off, right? It's there 24 seven. But if you wanna complement these systems, particularly if you think about a halo effect and utilize guard resources elsewhere in the face of having this technology in some of your most high risk locations, then it affords you that opportunity as well. Uh, there is a reason that I joined uh, as an advisory board member in full disclosure uh, for the gatekeeper systems because I believe in it. And I can tell you that uh, in my former life at Kroger, we invested heavily. And as we go through this presentation, hopefully the audience will understand why. Yeah, Mike, and, you know, and as I mentioned earlier, not only does it prevent the losses, but it helps identify the bad actors, right? And it's a lot of people that you just would never suspect um, that are doing this, whether it's in your local neighborhood market or drugstore or dollar store, um, there's a lot of folks that uh, that gatekeepers help identify, and I know at some point we're going to talk about repeat offenders and the shock and awe of how many times uh, that, that we that this isn't a one-time uh, occurrence uh, with individuals. So, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to, to Craig and Craig just talk us through the 
the technology and, and how the system works. Thanks, thanks, Terry. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Paul. Really an honor to be joining you. And good, good, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. You know, it, it's actually a, a a complex but but simple and invisible technology. You know, we install technology in the store that is completely invisible to your shoppers, to your good paying customers that brings, you know, as Mike said, it's faceless. It brings uniform decision making based on behavior and based on what that particular bad actor or good customer did with inside your store. And then, you know, could either stop the merchandise or allow it to go without confrontation. That happens really with four key components uh, that we install in the store. Next slide, please. We, we start with technology on the shopping cart. You know, the shopping cart is often complicit in theft in that it allows someone who's going to take uh, merchandise from your store to take large quantities in a, in a, single, in a single visit, a, th a single theft attempt. And uh, often, you know, with, uh, with reusable bags and, and, you know, all the self checks and things like that, there's, you know, or Starbucks or bank, there's plenty of cover within today's modern retail formats for them to do that often unnoticed. So for a cart standpoint, we put a, our smart wheel technology or smart wheels more and more. Uh, we're putting two wheels on a cart right now. We find people drag them and we put wheels on the front and back. And I think that's something certainly Mike could speak to that we just have much better retention of the merchandise. But we put a, um, a, a smart wheel and then a cart sign on every shopping cart that acts as certainly a warning into the fact that the cart may stop suddenly, but also we believe there's a deterrence effect as these systems become more common in the marketplace and people deploy more that when they see the technology and see the sign, they're more likely, repeat offenders are more likely to go to another location where they're not going to run into this obstacle. Beyond the equipment on the shopping cart, we put intelligent devices on the checkouts. We have a patented dwell technology that we put on, whether it's a regular you know, I call them cattle shoot checkout or a self check bots or the pharmacy or the deli that are configurable, highly configurable, depending on your retail format and allow us to be very flexible as these formats continue to evolve, that we can put these individual devices on the point of sale as you add more self checks, take out individual lanes, remote points of sale. We have a lot of flexibility in how we configure a store. So we have the wheels on the carts, we have the devices on the check stand and, or, or any POS. And then we have the equipment at the door. At the door, we, we put in some frequencies that actually talk to the cart that allow the, you know, that either stop the shopping cart or allow it to go. We have some other technology in the form of, uh, of a horn strobe and a horn and a strobe actually that alerts store personnel to the locked cart at the door because unlike other technologies, when that cart locks, that cart stays locked until somebody makes a decision to unlock it. Thus, how we retain so much merchandise and eliminate the confrontation that thieves typically, as you saw in the videos, more often than not just walk away or maybe take a few things but leave the cart. So we have the technology that locks the cart. We have uh, um, some, some other technology in the form of a keypad that allows store associates some bypass features so they can work with empty shopping carts whether they're taking carts outside or a lot of buy online pick up in store where they don't have a separate door. There's a lot of reasons carts may not may need to leave the store that didn't go through a conventional point of sale. So we've, we've kind of built all that into the solution. And then we have signage at the doors similar to the cart that acts as a warning that this store is protected with the system. The carts may stop and why. So that's basic basic Componentry, again, invisible to the paying customer, typically. Yeah, Craig, I think it's great. You mentioned the signage um, at the door and on the, the shopping cart, proactively letting customers know, but also let you know that those bad actors know that per check is in, uh, in, in the building as well, right? Um, for yeah. To understand that there's something unusual or unique about this cart. So, so Paul, let me ask you, I know you're 30 plus years of leadership in this industry from soft lines to, to hard lines and just being a subject matter expert. And I know in your role uh, in, with, with Gatekeeper, you speak to a lot of AP executives and there's not a lot of tools out there to help prevent or identify organized retail crime. 
what, what's what's the word on the street, Paul? What's what's your overall uh, view of the per check and polling? I think that uh, what I've heard from LP executives, Terry, in uh, business conversations is that our solution provides not only a deterrent, but it actually um, is one of the few solutions that stops the theft. And it stops it without human interaction. So the safeness of associates are prioritized at the highest level. And our associates in the stores feel more comfortable when we have a system like this deployed because they don't have to worry about, you know, going up and approaching an EAS stop or something like that and having a confrontation. Overall, it also helps their brand because they're not on YouTube with a shoplifter rolling around. The system takes all that out of it and it's actually an agnostic way for us to stop the crime as it happens. And then we maintain through state-of-the-art video equipment enough of uh, a surveillance picture that we have to help with an ORC prosecution. That's terrific. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps I can elaborate a little bit on that, Paul. The the you know from from a video perspective, you know it was interesting. We we had the basic solution in place for many many years. We started deploying the solution back in 2008 in its basic form, and what we quickly learned was you know we were seeing events at stores and seeing recoveries and stops and we were eliminating the violence and we were keeping the merchandise. But, you know, we really didn't know what we didn't know. And as we worked with folks like Mike and other, other leaders within our, our retailer partners, what we, what we clearly understood was we need some better data around this. So we came up with the, the, the camera solution that Gatekeeper deploys today, which is a comprehensive end-to-end -end, uh, camera solution that provides high definition event-based video specific to each cart activation to each event. And what we found is, as we started to look at that, is it provided tremendous insight into the behavior of the offenders, into the amount of opportunistic theft, and, and to, quite frankly, events going on at the door around theft, whether it was, you know, the associate response, perhaps non-response, and also gave us some really good data around the shopper experience. So as we started to look at that, that video, the other thing what we really realized was, you know, how key it was to make sure that that video was being looked at. And we're all really busy today. And so we decided that we were gonna embark on, you know, providing a service to our retailers where we could have all that video come in. And instead of, you know, one of the, our retail partners, valuable investigators, ORC investigators, analysts, whatever the role may be, spending part of their day looking at video to weed out the little, you know, the little gems that we see in terms of push out or important activity or repeat offenders or any of those things. We have a team of people now that goes through those videos and, and, you know, classifies them, whether it's an empty car or, you know, somebody came back in the store and left or, or whatever it may be so that we understand what does all the cart behavior look like? And then if they're, you're involved with our theft investigation team, we literally go in and classify. We have people that in loss prevention roles that look at these videos that have a high level of expertise that literally go in and classify as to, hey, it was a push out event. Here's the approximate dollars um, that we're assigning to it. And then also looking for repeat offender activity and tagging the videos as such, and then literally pushing those out to our retail partners at that particular, uh, whether division or enterprise wide to get them that important data. And, and I tell you, we, we think we've provided some real valuable insight into these theft events and the activity in support of uh, the solution. Things that, you know, after doing it, by the time we started this for almost 10 years before we added the video, things that we re never really understood. Hey, Craig, you know, you know what's great? I had the opportunity, I believe it was last month, maybe the month before this uh, year's flying by. Um, to actually go into a store um, with you to, to actually look at the system and talk to um, a store manager. But this is Gatekeeper's camera. And that's, that to me was just brilliant, right? So this camera isn't sit on a server for a retailer. This is, this is installed by and owned by uh, Gatekeeper. So if a, if a store system is down, it doesn't mean the Gatekeeper camera is down. That's right. Um, you guys own it. It doesn't have to go through IT. It doesn't have to sit on a store's network, um, which, is, which is just fantastic. So when you talk about a simple installation, 
And then when you're talking about the camera system itself or the actual dedicated camera, that's a gatekeeper camera. And then the service that you provide by having your employees go through the video, classify the incidents. Um, it's just a great service that you offer uh, to your customers. Yeah, you know, we, we, we're, we're able to provide some enterprise reporting that's proven, and I think Mike can probably speak to this, it's actually proven really valuable as we look at, as we look at push out theft. I mean, again, back to the old days, we know when a store manager reported they stopped a cart push of X amount of dollars, but as we learned, as we really started understanding this crime and who's doing it and how much and how frequently, um, you know, we're able to provide some really high level data about the theft by perhaps the store's risk tier, the days and hours that that theft is common. Um, you know, what, what is the sizes of the average push out thefts? Are they perhaps opportunistic? Somebody's stealing food, which might not even show up in any of your traditional, uh, traditional um, uh, uh, exception reporting where you have high theft things that are, you know, inventory to sales aren't matching up, but, but food. Or are they ORC? You know, what type of merchandise they're selling? So we're able to provide what, what we believe, and I think our retail partners would agree, some insightful reporting on a monthly basis as part of the camera and, and the video service that, that really helps them understand the problem, what push out looks like in their stores. Right, let me let me jump on the on the back of your comments there to tell you that during my uh, tenure at Kroger. Uh, one of the most transformational decisions we made was to integrate TV with the system. Uh, yes, we did get good feedback from stores that you know it was it was effective as a tool to deter this type of activity and that it took the associate out of the equation. But it, a lot of what we had was anecdotal, right? And you know, this notion of uh, trust me, uh, I'm right doesn't get you too far when it comes to capital committee meetings and. You know, you're in there vying against folks like sales and marketing and operations and government relations. You better have data, right? Passion is a great thing to have going in, but you better have data and data analytics that help support the business case and the ROI. And you'll recall, Craig, during my time there, initially we had just a handful of stores where we had That's integrated right. TV. And as I began, once I onboarded with, uh, with Kroger to understand the system and all the aspects and the potential value, we made a conscious decision to invest additional capital monies to integrate your TV system with it. And it was a game changer. And for a guy that's 42 years in the business, and I think we'll get to some of this data here in a moment from you, I was absolutely stunned by what I saw. Uh, and moreover, what it did allow was the forensics of shrink become a lot easier for you. You know, I don't know how many practitioners are on our call today, but you spend your life trying to understand causal factors of shrink. And you may be chasing soda in a grocery environment because you think it's a shipping issue, or you think it's a case pack issue, or you think it's a DSD issue. When in reality, it may be shoved out the front door in a shopping cart. So what it helped us do was really understand uh, the depth and scope of our issue uh, which I think as you get into the latter part of this presentation, if, if the folks on this uh, webinar don't find that compelling, you're not going to be compelled. Yep. Yep. Hey, I, I, saw a, uh, I saw a quick question pop up. I know it's not Q&A, but it's a great, uh, it's a great question. And have we, have, we, uh, um, have we identified dishonest people and collusion? And unfortunately, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately is the answer is, Yes, and it happens all too often. Um, we do find people that are unlocking a cart or uh, allowing a cart through. The, gr the good news is, is when you have the video element, anytime the system is overridden, regardless of how you get a video of who does it and when. And so we have, we have all that. That's always, I'm sure, although I've never been in the room when that information has been delivered to somebody after they've witnessed it, uh, I'm sure it doesn't go well for them. But the good news is, is yeah, we yeah, When you look at just to your point internally, sweethearting pass offs, um, you know, when you're doing a reverse investigation, lo and behold, uh, yep. not only is this an external issue, but can absolutely identify um, internal theft as well. Sure, sure. Well, you, you know, Mike, in, in follow up, I, I remember that. I, I remember um, that conversation shortly after you came on board. I remember exactly what you said, which was uh, if this technology is helping us really beyond the anecdotal information, we need to do more. 
And if it's not, you know, you're a nice guy and all Craig and your team's good, but uh, I got to, I got to move on and do something that's going to move the needle. And we decided that we were going to kind of get into doing some surveillance to really understand what these stores look like. In other words, you know, as, as in kind of setting up this next video um, that we were going to take a look at events without locking the carts and understanding what does the theft problem look like at a store before the system goes live? Because our sense was that once a system went live, we were only measuring a very small portion of what the problem was due to deterrence or quite frankly, people just going elsewhere. And I think we could all agree that, that what we found at this particular store was shocking. Um, we chose to highlight only six repeat offenders in a six week period, we found uh, over 90 repeat offenders at one single location. Many of them, as you're seeing, were hitting the store every day. None of these carts were locked. And it, I'm sure, it, Mike, it had to be painful for you and the team to watch this merchandise going out the door in an effort to measure it. However, um, the information I think it provided and allowed us to respond with is not only from an ROI perspective, you can certainly speak to that, but as to what to do with the problem. I mean, you see, we had, we had, we, we nicknamed this guy, Troy. He was walking out with the Troy built lawnmower every day at your store in an easy up tent. I mean, I, I mean, that's, you know, five, 600 bucks a day and he was doing it every day and nobody knew. And he looked like an upstanding guy. He was dressed well. I mean, these are not, these don't necessarily look like thieves, which is kind of the beauty of this, right? Hey, Craig, and not only is it every day, but that's just that store. How many other stores was that individual hitting? Um, in, in, in a single day, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the one thing that, that hopefully resonates with anyone who's in this asset protection and LP space is uh, it was a six week period in this one store and it's out in Portland. I won't, it doesn't matter the name of the store, but over 90 repeat offenders. Now, when you're showing video like this to your senior leadership, and you're trying to argue that we have to be more in terms of technology <clears throat> like this in order to really thwart these issues, uh, people listen. As I said earlier, a picture's worth a thousand words. And it, you know, you're right, Craig, this made us sick to our stomach. And, yeah. and as a four decade guy in the business, I had no idea. And I would argue that anyone that's on this call that has a front end operation, you're not the exception. If you don't have a technology like this, you are likely experiencing the same risk. It does vary, of course, based on risk factor and demographic and market, but uh, that, that was one of the more compelling statistics that came to light during my tenure at Kroger. Yeah, I mean, here's, you know, here's the basic results. And, and I mean, this was, this was shocking to everybody as we've talked about. I mean, we were seeing an average of, you know, better part of, $10,000 a week uh, a week going out of the store for six weeks. And keep in mind, those numbers, full transparency, are some of the highest we've seen based on the format and the merchandise that that particular store carried. However, I would say, regardless of what the dollars look like, the trend that is exhibited here, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, um, is common. What we see is common in terms of measurement, uh, the breakup between um, opportunistic theft, ORC, and all cart based theft. And then what happens once we actually turn these systems on and how much really becomes deterrence and, and, uh, and recovery at that point and theft avoidance, merchandise retention. And, you know, in this, in this particular store, the repeat offender activity of not individuals, but numbers of pushouts were 67, 64. So call it an average of about 65 repeat offender pushes a week for six weeks. Once we measured it and we got the dollars in, we turned the system on so those pushouts became activated carts and we saw the repeater offender activity at that store go to zero within two weeks. Now, the bad news is they probably just went someplace else. I mean, that's the reality of it, but we stopped it at that store and the you know, 10, 11, $12,000 a week that was going out the front door within a couple of weeks was down to about $2,500 and it was recoveries for the most part. Some stuff is still lost, but for the most part it was recoveries. And I just thought this data in terms of the various streams was just extraordinary. 
Craig, you'll recall that one of the things we did was we poured over thousands of videos provided by you guys where we had a known or suspected push out. And to your point, in the spirit of complete transparency, we did see on occasion a portion of the cart being pilfered. Uh, some sure. of the small carts that would literally try to lift and carry them. But think sure. about where you do deploy guards. I mean, you can do intelligent guarding with this tool, right? Because you know right. the most problematic stores where issues like skimming off the top of the basket or attempting to take the small uh, cart and carry it out the door is going to warrant some coverage. But it wasn't Kroger personnel. It was a third party who's trained. They've been identified um, you know, in order to execute for us this type of coverage. Uh, to me, this speaks to people and technology. I think the absence of either one is not necessarily a great remedy, but it, what it does allow you to do is do intelligent guarding. And if you've got a hundred bucks to spend to oversimplify, how do you best spend that hundred bucks? And this technology, I think helps guide you with those decisions. It does, yep. Mike. You know, and you think about, you mentioned a hundred bucks, look at inflation today. What's a hundred dollars in a grocery box uh, today uh, in the grocery world, right? It's not, <laughs> a, uh, it's not a lot. Sometimes, you know what, opportunity, Opportunities make, you know, people make uh, bad decisions. And what this is, is a preventative tool um, to, to prevent losses. And, you know, I mean, look at the kind of the state of where we're at today. Mike, I think you referenced it earlier, you know, with ORC uh, laws starting to take effect, but felony thresholds continue to go up. So shoplifting yep. continues to be perceived as a uh, victimless crime. But this to me, the, the compelling case is, is the safety issue. Right, is when this stops and there's no confrontation at the door. The cart locks, you know, you may have a, a, an extra push or two before the person just decides that they're getting out of there. And then it's the reverse investigation to find out what happened, how did it happen, why did it happen, um, and, and try to, to make sure it doesn't happen again going forward or keep it out of your building. Uh, because if it's, a, if it's an ORC, uh, ring or individual uh, tied to an ORC ring, they're most likely going to go somewhere else. So, uh, but yeah. the stats are, are very, very compelling uh, to really make a, a quick ROI on the Percheck solution. Yeah, and I think, you know, we took a lot of things away from this, you know, all the stores, and this is just one we're studying for today's purposes for time reasons, but, you know, um, almost virtually every store that we've done is losing more than the store really believed in carts. You know, the offenders were not commonly overly apparent, should we say, you know, the number of repeat offenders was was astonishing to everybody involved, including very seasoned people. And, you know, the video clips have been really, really helpful with ORC people, not only within a particular retailer, but ORC people, you know, obviously cooperate a great deal. And having those, you know, high definition emailable clips of repeat offenders to build cases on to get past some of those felony thresholds and meet some of the, you know, meet some of the requirements around, around prosecution has been very, very helpful. We, we, we know of share groups out there of LP professionals that actually are sharing these videos back and forth in addition with all the other evidence they want to, that, you know, they're compiling. And, that, and I think another thing that's really important and Mike highlighted on it with some of the guard services is being able to leverage this data with other providers. We're in a number of projects with some of who we consider complementary providers, you know, a lot of LPF members and some were doing a thing at Rela with some of our, our, our close partners where this known offender data, known offender data can be leveraged with other solutions to help enhance the value of what the retailer may be getting across a variety of solutions. And I think that's really important as well. So this is this is getting the key data at the time of theft and memorializing in a way that can be useful across a variety of, of uh, solutions. Yeah, and it's a, it's a front end solution that, you know, when you look at today, EAS is probably in, safe to say, 90% of all boxes out there, right? Whether it's food, whether it's drug, uh, drugs, yep. hard lines, soft lines. Um, EAS notifies you that something left and something wasn't deactivated, but it doesn't stop the people and it doesn't stop the product from leaving uh, the building where this does. And again, like I said, to, to, to prevent the loss, it's just a, a great tool. And, and I wish uh, we had a dozen or two dozen uh, different solutions for organized retail crime prevention. But unfortunately, the fact of the matter is we really don't. So this is yeah. one of the few tools out there that we can actually look at and say, um, this is making a difference um, in, in identifying, preventing 
uh, ORC while keeping uh, people safe. You know, Terry, you mentioned an important point. The system that, that we have really goes together with any other solutions you already have, albeit gates or gods or readers or cameras, cameras in the parking lot. We're complementary to that. Uh, we're part of hardening that target. And for sure, we're one of the few solutions that stops it um, from an agnostic manner so that they can't get out. But uh, we certainly do uh, complement the other technologies that are in place today. Absolutely. So let, let me let me just pile on one last time, and and then uh, suppose we can move on. But I would just tell you that when I was uh, over at my former retailer, the most recent retailer, uh, this was perhaps the most clearest lens that we had on the depth and scope of repeat offenders and ORC. And I can't tell you the number of occasions where. I mean, I remember one girl, we called her flip-flop girl because she always had on flip-flops. And we gave that information to our ORC teams. This was out of the Nashville market. And it empowered them to close cases quicker simply because they had visibility to who the perpetrator was. And we knew the frequency and we knew what they were stealing. And you can almost become predictive with the tool, you know? Uh, and I don't know how many times guys and ladies much smarter than me would look at the system and go, I know I am most vulnerable on a Thursday between 11 and 3 on a suspected push-out, either through a passive test we had done or either through the system itself. Uh, because thank God, crooks aren't brilliant. Some of them are smarter than others, but they're not brilliant. And so this allowed us to kind of stay a step ahead of the game. And there's no question in my mind, it was one of the most significant investments we made for the successful run that we had delivered on Shrink during my time there. No one solution is the silver bullet. I think, you know, I would be naive and, and wouldn't be honest to say that. This was an integral part of our strategy uh, at Kroger. Uh, what, Terry, one of the things that uh, I have the fortune uh, of participating in is getting feedback from stores that we've recently deployed. Um, and we don't really like to name customers, but very large customers that we have in the US, what the LP people are telling me is, it makes their job much easier. It allows them to take the video and create a learning event out of it so that they can educate their front end people. It also makes them feel safer because they were the people, even though they weren't apprehending, they were the people confronting and this makes them feel safer. And in general, um, they believe it's gonna help with retention of employees. Uh, as the uh, animosity grows about working for people uh, when there's violence in the workplace coming in. So uh, I'm hearing great things from the LP people. And one of the differences between Gatekeeper and other companies uh, is the fact that we have LP people on staff. We spend a great deal of time interacting with the LP folks so that we're learning and that we're evolving uh, our technology we have a team of engineers in, in San Jose being a US-based company um, that we take the problems we hear from the field, we feed them up to uh, San Jose and they actually come up with solutions. Uh, one took about two months and it's fully deployed right now in a store. And uh, based on testing, this will be a meaningful difference for all retailers once we prove the concept and, taste and test it in this large box store. So that's a difference we, we provide as a company um, that we want to listen and be part of that community um, and support that front end loss prevention person, that vice president of loss prevention um, in you know, helping them achieve their shrink goals. Yeah, Paul, you, you think about proactively like teaching and training awareness in stores, right? And, and I think that happens right. everywhere in our industry. When something looks out of place, how do you react to it? And when you have somebody come in and start filling up a shopping cart with high dollar product or high risk product and associates are aware of that, when you think of a traditional um, uh, L, um, retail environment, that there's an AP person on duty, they're gonna be called to go find that person and surveil that cart. If not, maybe it's an assistant store manager or, or a supervisor. But with Percheck, you really don't have to spend the time following them all, all around the store because you know that cart's gonna lock up at the door. Right, so it's getting the other information. Who is this person? What do they look like? What kind of car did they end up 
um, going into when you're doing the reverse investigation, knowing proactively the product's not going to leave the store. Could you imagine, you know, I know we all started at one point uh, as in-store LP people. And could you imagine having this technology going back when we were working in the stores? I mean, this would have been nirvana uh, for us to, to not only prevent the losses, uh, but to build a case, work with law enforcement uh, to lock people up. You know, this would have been, uh, uh, would, would have been great to have for sure. Great. It, it also would have reduced a lot of liability that retailers saw in the <laughs> 80s and 90s uh, <laughs> on instinct as opposed to factual data. Yeah, so without uh, Right. U uniform decision making. It's uh, we're all one one bad accusation on an iPhone away from moving a stock price, unfortunately. And this really this really checks that box. Right. You, you, you have uniform decision making. It's 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 doesn't happen often, but it's really, really helpful. Yeah, and, and Terry, one of the things that I've recently noticed is we have police departments coming to us now saying, how do we get more of that deployed in retailers? Because we don't want to show up after the fact. We want to help them stop it. Because right. a lot of times they show up and they get a license plate number and they have to chase it. So, uh, and that's always good news when, you know, you've got proactive police departments asking for the solution to be deployed. Yep, that's uh, that's terrific, and that really tells the story. And, and I can even think back, Paul, of just you know, I mean, think of policies and procedures in place, and a lot of retailers today have a hands-off uh, policy. But sometimes, you know, emotion and passion um, overwhelms employees, right? Because when when someone steals from a store, and you've worked at a store for a couple of years or a dozen years, um, it's hard to hide that emotion when when people walk out uh, with product, and we've all seen. Not only videos from our AP days, but we see things on YouTube. We see things, videos that, that are shared out there now, TikTok, um, and all the uh, the bad decisions that a lot of people make, and the passion of trying to protect the retailer. And what's really happening is they're opening themselves up um, to to be injured. Nobody wants that um, at all. So, um, I think we have some great questions that have come in. I've seen I've seen a lot of questions come in, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking at the list now. I just, I was. Yeah. It's like, what are we going to do if we don't have any questions? We got some, we got some really good questions. Yeah, we have some great questions. But Paul, did you want to cover if uh, people are looking for some more information? Uh, I know you guys are going to be down in Rila and, and a few other places. Yeah, we'll, we're participating uh, down at Rila. We uh, will be in booth 2012. Um, myself and Craig and my partner, Evan Lawson, we will be rocking the RELA thing. It's so great to get back together with the practitioners and the RELA team. Yep. It's been a great yep. conference, as you all know. Um, also, you can email me at pjones at gatekeepersystems.com. Um, grab me on LinkedIn. Um, we, we're here to help, and we're here to respond to your needs quickly. So, uh, you know, we would love to be able to help support and bring shrink numbers down and, and safeness to a lot of retail stores that have not yet deployed us. Um, sure. So uh, running an event. Uh, sorry, Craig, go ahead. No, I was just going to say we have that we have the Drive Shack Golf event at Rila with some of the solution providers that I you know that that I had highlighted. You know that we have real strong partnerships. Our friends at Access, uh, Face First, Aurora. Live View Technologies, all great companies. We have a co-sponsored event for anybody that, that wants to participate in that. We'll make sure there's a link available post-show. And then, um, you know, Gatekeeper, we want you to be able to learn more. We have some information that's going to come out in the upcoming ORC issue uh, with Loss Prevention Magazine. It'll be distributed to all the shows and sent out, you know, like a normal, a normal uh, magazine edition as well. And then we'll be participating with Terry and, and these other board members on the call here. At the uh, at the Loss Prevention uh, Foundation Town Hall, May 18th and 19th, we're really really excited about participating in that. Terry, Mike, and Paul, thank you for that. It, and Terry, that's all part of the commitment that I I felt refreshing with Gatekeeper. They're part of the community. We, we participate with the LP Foundation the magazine, as well as the Loss Prevention Research Council, yep. um, and they're all in with the retail partners, which is really important. Absolutely. We appreciate it.
well, I, you know, it was a real learning experience for me as, as I got into this part of the business, Terry. Well, 20 years ago, when we first started Push Out, I, I have to, full disclosure, we stopped a, a little old lady with about three items in her cart, and I felt we had just turned on our first system, and I immediately felt for some reason it had been an accident, which was a big mistake considering it was our technology. I ran over there, I apologized, and I unlocked her shopping cart. I was there doing a training, and the the um, VP of LP was at the at that particular store and said, you shouldn't have done that. You should have you should have asked her for a receipt. And I said, oh, that was grandma. And sure enough, we went up and looked at the video and watched her come in, go down one of the aisles, pull a plastic bag out of her purse, throw some things in it and go out the other door on the other side of the store. And I made a conclusion based on what I thought versus any facts. And, and uh, that was a great lesson for me back in 2007 as to, as to how to approach this and just validated for me what, ever since what we're doing. Absolutely. Fantastic dialogue. And thank you guys so much for the great information. We do have several questions coming in through the, the platform. So if you have questions, please enter them into the Q&A box. So the first question uh, came in right when you were talking about the review portal and Craig, your team reviewing those. So does the Gatekeeper Systems team also review any and all overrides to identify collusion in the event that the employee at the door is working with uh, an individual. It, 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 it does. They, you know, if they, if we have the theft, theft and we call out the overrides, if it's basic video review, if it's theft investigation services, which is what most of our partners are doing, we actually call those out specifically as an override and make sure that those videos get forwarded to the AP teams at that particular customer. Obviously we're not, uh, we're not, um, we're not always aware of, you know, somebody could be in street clothes or whatever to identify employee, but if the system's overridden and we see an override with merchandise involved, it is called out specifically for investigation. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. Uh -huh. uh, next question we have in the pipe is uh, with technology improving year over year, uh, talk to us a little bit about new device and ongoing development. Yeah, you know, we're always looking at uh, rolling in additional levels to the solution. One of the things we're really focused on, though, is shopper experience. So as we continue to develop the product line, we have something right already in place that we have deployed in stores today, an option where we can actually override uh, the empty carts automatically to provide a better shopper experience. So if someone's leaving with an empty cart or a store clerk taking empty carts out, things of that nature, we can cut the actual you know, uh, activations by as much as 50 or 60%, depending on how much empty cart usage or handling of carts there is at a store. Then we've got some other uh, eye in the sky technology we're looking at for other solutions and um, more data specific to shopper behavior, cart behavior, and some other things um, that are current problems that not quite ready to talk about yet, but that uh, are gonna solve some other prevalent problems in the store um, at the point of theft in the store. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome, awesome. Yep. Um, next question is, what causes some of the carts to stop versus others? So I know that we showed some videos and some was more of the learning, right? Uh, right. Just learning how big the problem was but what causes some of the carts to stop at the door and what prevents others from stopping at the door? Well, if a system is activated, you know, a cart that has not come in contact with an active point of sale, whether it be a remote point of sale or a check stand, a self check bot, whatever it is, customer service counter, um, any cart that didn't come to a point of sale would be activated at the door. Cause again, back to it's behavior based, nothing to do with what's in the cart of the person. Uh, but we do have a surveillance mode that we often use to measure not only theft at a store before a system goes on because it drops off so quickly afterwards, which is a good thing, but to get some good measurements of deterrence. And then also, you know, to measure, is the system optimized for that particular store? A lot of, like I can tell you right now, we have over 100 stores going through uh, remodels and self-check ads right now. Well, after all those check stands are reconfigured, we're going to want to watch those on video without stopping carts until we're sure we've checked all the boxes to some of the possible behavior um, that, that that store might have before we're turning it on and potentially impacting a good shopper. So we're there's a lot of reasons, but they're very uh, they're very deliberate in nature. 
um, when the system is on, it works. The miss rate is is below one tenth of one percent, and uh, you know carts will. Uh, you won't even know the system exists if you go in and pay, and if you don't, your cart's going to be activated and give someone an opportunity to engage or you to walk away if it's a dubious event. Excellent. Uh, next question, Mike. I guess we'll go to you. How does this approach differ from other solutions within the industry trying to address the problem of organized retail crime? Well, I think it uh, it offers a unique perspective in a sense that not only does it lock the cart uh, in the face of typically a shopping cart full of product, which is not generally your spontaneous shoplifter, but it also provides you that video. Uh, information and intelligence that allows you to understand based on identity through CCTV who who the bad operator is. So, uh, you know, I, I'm sure there's other players in this space. I don't think it's a crowded space in terms of the number of solution providers. Uh, but as I alluded to earlier, it was one of the most significant pieces of arsenal and our weaponry, if you will, uh, as it related to shrink at, at, at Kroger. Uh, and I also think it speaks to this notion, and we've been talking about it as an industry for a while, how, you know, we must continue to leverage and exploit technology. And, you know, the only regret I have is when I was at Walmart, we didn't introduce it there. Uh, I, there was this concern that there would be too much customer friction. Well, Kroger does 11 million transactions a day. And uh, these systems were deployed in a lot of stores north of 1700. And I don't know that a complaint ever hit my desk as the VP. And I know certainly it didn't at the C-suite level. Now, that's not to say that you don't have the occasional false positive. I mean, I think that's true with any technology. But the amount of noise, if you will, or customer friction was insignificant. And therefore, that's one of the primary reasons that that organization is continuing to invest. Because you do have a halo effect too, right? I mean, many folks would say, well, okay, you're going to button up one store, you're going to push my problem to another. So as you think about risk leveling and, and, and risk, uh, uh, rate of risk and rate of theft in stores, you know, you go about your worst stores first and then you try to, you know, insulate against this, uh, this displacement or this uh, push out effect. But I guarantee you, if you're stopping 50 carts in a store with Gatekeeper, not all 50 carts are going to go to another place. Maybe 30, maybe 25, who knows that number? But I can tell you, it, it helped contribute to the reduction of shrink via theft during my during my tenure at Kroger. Not to mention, it might not be one of your other stores. It might be one of your competitor stores that they're migrating to. So you're pushing them out of your buildings and preventing that loss from spreading necessarily within your own. Uh, fantastic response. And we did have somebody mention if there's any data around hand baskets, so hand carried baskets. Uh, and if there's a solution to help address those types of thefts with gatekeeper systems. Yeah, we're really focused on that. We had actually done a, a, a module, Matt, early on with some partnerships, uh, some longstanding partnerships. We had done a module around hand baskets. And, you know, what we found was, you know, you really can't stop a hand basket. And although the modules had a screamer typical to like a three alarm device or something like that and would, would trigger would trigger an event and an alarm. What we found was, you know, the retailer was losing a hand basket, the hand basket with merchandise, and now the cost of our device on the hand basket, and it became a costly problem. So we're we're very focused around bringing something to the forefront, which is one of the things I I, I won't go too far deep in in more of an AI that doesn't involve a device that could perhaps give us some of the the evidence that we're talking about today. Um, whether it be video or alarming and, and repeat offender that doesn't actually involve a device understanding the likelihood that you're not really going to be able to stop a hand basket, but we mm -hmm. can collect some better data about what that looks like. And I would add, you know, although it isn't always popular with the marketers or sometimes the operators, but we've had a number of our partners that have had such good results with this yet had hand baskets disappear so quickly that at certain stores, they've increased, if you will, like the mini little two-tier Euro carts and mm -hmm. pulled the hand baskets and really done it with very little uh, customer friction. And in fact, many cases, increased the average dollar per transaction at those stores because they were upgrading those people that had a hand basket. So, you know, not everybody's open to that, but as you start to look at that data and that's data we can help you with, 
that certainly is is something to be considered in your high high risk environments, especially, right? Yep. Uh, and, and, and I'll just jump in. Just I know you guys just continue uh, to have this technology evolve, and your engineers continuing to work on a smarter wheel and a smarter cart. Um, and that's cart, Paul Jones, not cot, in case you're wondering what that meant. But um, <laughs> what does an empty basket look like, right? Having technology to be able to define what a full cart is versus an empty cart, uh, having a child in the cart, what a child looks like, what a purse looks like or a handbag looks like versus uh, merchandise in a cart. And I'm telling you, it just, it's just amazing what machine learning um, can do. And it's just great to see uh, this solution continues to evolve uh, with the technology um, and engineering as well. Absolutely. And, and I, I just love the fact that gatekeeper systems can help retailers to identify how big is the problem? Right. Um, I'm so excited that there's a technology that will actually identify how big the problem is. And that way you can learn it, we can quantify it, and then we can go and, and basically talk intelligently with our executive teams on what we can do with this type of technology. We only have time for one more question. So Paul, I'm gonna ask you, when a retail leverages this type of technology, how quickly do they see violence and confrontations go away within their stores? Well, that's the, uh, the critical thing, I think, Matt, is the timing. It's immediate. Um, the minute we turn the system on from surveillance mode, the first stop that locks those wheels on the cot begins your payment back on the ROI. It's an immediate uh, from turning the system on. And then what you'll see is a deterrent effect kick in over time that these folks aren't coming back once they cut locks and you know and they leave. Um, so retailers can establish a quick ROI or beginning of the ROI based on the immediacy of locking the cuts at the door. Yeah, and, and that true ROI is priceless when it's keeping a, a person safe. Um, and so the fact that you're removing them from harm's way and protecting our employees and our customers. I think it, it speaks volumes for what the, what the organizations are willing to do uh, to protect their number one asset. Uh, so we wanna thank you all for joining us for our LPF webinar. Gatekeeper Systems is sponsoring a 20% discount code off of LPF memberships, as well as our certification courses. We'll include that promo code in our post webinar email that you'll receive tomorrow. And you will wanna pay attention for that email as five lucky attendees will receive an LP certification course scholarship courtesy of Gatekeeper Systems. As always, thank you for attending today and supporting the Loss Prevention Foundation as well as Gatekeeper Systems. We look forward to having you on future LPF webinars. Stay safe and we'll see you real soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. You bet.